And now it's time for Photo Booth Live Chat with John Young. Good evening in the world. Tonight we are coming to you live from actually the upper part of the United States. We're coming to you live from Minnesota and from out in the Philadelphia area. And I've got Dave Stevenson with me tonight. Good evening, Dave. How are you doing? I'm Great doing, to be here. doing well, doing well. Thanks for coming on tonight. Uh, for those of you who do not know Dave, if you are on in the group, the Photo Booth Network, you probably have heard of him. And if you haven't, it's probably because you were you were a troublemaker. No, <laughs> not that. Anyway, we love everybody. Not that anyone's ever a troublemaker on Facebook pages or <laughs> the internet. Or, uh, uh, Dave also has uh, spoken at uh, some of the different conventions out there, and he's going to be speaking and the upcoming Photo Booth Expo, which was that ad you guys just saw a moment ago. Uh, the link for the Photo Booth Expo, by the way, is down in the description. You can go out and check that out. Dave, you've been speaking at these shows. What? What? Can I, what got you into the doing the speaking side of things? Um, well, I started the my network group, the Photo Booth Network, and it was just basically to pay it forward, mm -hmm. to help help other boothers get started and learn and you know grow their business. And you know now we're we've got this whole big industry that's kind of just taken off and keeps going and growing and getting bigger every day. That it has. And for those of you who have been following, if you haven't been to Photo Booth Expo, it's been one of those events that's growing and growing and growing every year. More people coming to it and such, which is really kind of a cool and exciting and fun time in Vegas. So, again, photoboothexpo.com. You guys can go out there and check it out. And, Dave, you'll be uh, speaking on the main stage in the Photo Booth uh, track this year. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I spoke the first year and uh you know now coming back again putting some new things together and kind of helping people learn and and maybe pick up some new ideas and grow their business and that kind of will bridge us into tonight's topic we're going to be talking about some of the misconceptions or myths and the reason we we use the the myth in the title or the in the uh on the graphic is because misconceptions is this long of a word and myth is this long so the thumbnail got myth, but some of the mis misconceptions because I think it, it, Dave, we've both been in, in the in the entertainment industry for a long time, mm -hmm. and how many times people come up and say, "Wow, this has got to be the coolest job ever!" It, I, I I'd love to do this. This looks so easy and simple and fun, and there's all over. Yeah, well, people think, oh, it, you know, they they see the fun part of it, but they don't see the back end stuff where you're spending. <laughs> You know, hours prepping all your machines, making sure that you have your media ordered, making sure that you, uh, you know, your, all your equipment is good to go. You have backups ready to go. You know, those those little things that they they, they see the end result. You know, everybody sticking their tongues out and you know making duck lips and, <laughs> and uh, blowing kisses to the to the camera. And it looks so easy. You make it look so yeah, easy. So make it look so easy. <laughs> so so that's obviously kind of leads us into some of those misconceptions, Dave. So you've got a few of them. Let's, let's go through some of the biggest ones that you have encountered as you've been talking to people throughout the industry. The, the, the biggest one, and I, you know, I hear this from, oh, anybody can do this. No, 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 no. Not anybody can do this. You've got to be a person that is good with people to really be successful in this. That's why um, a lot of DJs, I think, have flocked to this a little bit also is um because you're used to enter entertaining people and having fun and joking around and that's kind of what you need when you're in the photo booth side you need to kind of be able to break things down and 
people don't understand what it's all about. Sure. Well, they, they do so more now because photo booths are everywhere. But, you know, a few years ago, people really didn't know, you know, well, what is this? What do I do? You know, and then to have fun with the people and joke around with them. So they come back and this is something that they're going to keep on their refrigerator or their their office wall or somewhere for a long time. Right. Yeah. And every and you wanna you wanna tie that um, memory to that picture that whenever they look at it they remember, okay, that was it, you know, Jill and Mark's wedding. I had such a wonderful time. And that's that's kind of the thing that you're you're capturing. Sure. And if, keep that in mind. It's not just, you know, getting paid because I mean, we're all in it to obviously uh you know, make some money at this, but the, uh, the, the real goal is, is the entertainment part and then the engaging the experience. So, yeah. so if a person were looking for, say if I wanted to expand and I wanted to hire someone or I'm looking for someone to become my photo booth attendant, which in your opinion is more important to find, is it more important to find someone who's going to be that, that socially connecting person, person, personality? Or someone who is technically uh, uh, savvy enough to be able to handle the the software and the gear, which one do you think is e is easier to find one and train the other side of it? Well, that's 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 the hard part because you're going to <laughs> normally find one or the or other. the other exactly. Or you know, um, uh, but there are those combinations of people that are there. Um, I mean, truthfully, I ha I've had the most success with uh, college kids and teachers mm -hmm. because they they're interacting i mean the teachers are interacting with kids all day long and you know adults in these photo booths are nothing more than you know 12 year olds just grown up <laughs> um and uh, you know having fun and there's times where you got to kind of corral them and, and get them back in line and everything like that so you know that's kind of what you got to find is just somebody who has a little bit of technical knowledge um, but nowadays the software is becoming so much easier mm -hmm. to kind of run itself that you don't need those, you don't have all the technical issues. I mean, you can set everything up at where they turn it on and it's right there and ready to go. Makes, yeah, makes so. things a lot, a lot simpler for surely. Okay. Let's jump to our second, our second one. If it was all about right. the tech side, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. There's a ton of money to be made in this industry. And I'm not going to say that there isn't, but there's there there is, but you have to do the work for it. Mm. You, you have to put the time in. You have to call customers back. You have to um, invest in your yourself sure. and learn. You know that's why the expos do so well. Um, you know, going. I found that you know interacting with people that go to the expos and that are on the groups and ask questions and and want to learn are the ones that become very successful. I know, you know, a few people who have started just, you know, from the groups in the early days when I first started a network and now are super successful and run, you know, have multiple booths in multiple cities. And, and you know, they, they really know how to network and, and are really successful, but they put a lot of time in. It's not something you can just buy the equipment and, um, you know, the money's just going to print itself out, just like the pictures. You you have to invest in yourself is, is the main main part of that. To really, yeah, to really grow in this day and age. Let's take this 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 point. Let's go back ten years, maybe 10, 12 years. Would you have that? Would this point be the same as it was 10, 12 years ago? Not as much because you didn't have as many manufacturers back then. You had maybe. A handful, whereas now, I mean, now you have hundreds almost mm -hmm. of builders out there, and there's so many different styles. Before, you know, you had a camera and a computer, a big massive computer, ten years ago. You know, whereas now everything's running off of you know a Surface tablet or an iPad. Right. Yeah. So the technology has kind of really brought it forward, where everything's getting smaller and lighter and, and easier. And that's kind of changed the, the going rate in many markets, I believe, Sure. as we've come sure. forward. So I think at one time with the 
more of a scarcity when it came to that or the the it was a no, the novelty was there that it was at a higher price than certainly i'm finding you know the first photo booth i had sold a lot higher than the ones i do today yeah yeah, yeah. i mean when I, when i first started um you know i i could get over two two grand for for some events wow and wow. you know now you know the prices have come down because mm -hmm. you know it, you want to be a little bit more competitive and you know you pick and choose your um clients and uh just getting that that right venue and things like that I, luckily i've made a lot of really good connections throughout the years to uh you know kind of help i do a lot of white labeling for other companies that hmm. just chose to, not to go that route and that's 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 an easy thing oh and certainly you know, to and stay that, busy. and that circles back to your 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 you're hustling you're working you're out there and because of that you've got you have success and you can make money it's just it doesn't come to you if you just sit oh i have one now they're going to come running to me it doesn't happen that right. way anymore right good point what do you get for number three all right um i can do this with what i have around my house diy <laughs> yeah this one's a this is a good one you know there's i will say that my first my very first system was um, a camera with a little net netbook computer and i had an epson or not an epson, yeah, an epson or no a canon home printer that i printed on the little four by six sheet and cut it Cut it with a little paper cutter and thought, "Wow, this is great." And you no, know, when you when you break it down, and this is part of understanding what you're doing, is figure out your costs. Put a business plan together first and foremost before yeah. you even think about this. Put a plan together and invest in the right equipment for what you're doing. People notice. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of times people say, "Oh." You know this this is beautiful you know i have this beautiful backdrop and i've got these really funny props but then they get their their picture and it smudges or, or you know well, yeah, yeah. they're out of focus or fuzzy you know those those types of things so that's just investing in good equipment up front and it will last you in the long run oh for sure and it'll lead to more future business over basing something on you know, that five-year-old webcam and the, the netbook. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember netbooks. Yeah. Uh, good, good tip. What, where are we up to number four? Uh, number four, props are fun. No, they're not. They're not fun. <laughs> Spoken as a true photo. <laughs> no, they're not, man. They're not <laughs> fun. No, no, no. No, actually, they, they can be. But, you know, sometimes I see companies that, you know, set up two or three big tables of props and things like that and that's what they're known for but you got to realize people it's not always more is better sometimes less is more and and that's you know i, I know a lot of companies that do just fine and have stopped even using props altogether sure you know and it, it because it's about the experience you know if you're doing creating the the, the imagery and and the fun you don't even need props nowadays and there's so many different options now that you don't even need physical props. You mm -hmm. can do the digital ones and things like that. <laughs> props aren't fun. <laughs> You're such a killjoy, man. <laughs> I'm just honest. And now from our, our, our word from our prop sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> and I buy, and listen, I've got tons and tons of props in tubs on shelves that, you know, we, we select props for each event. And, it, and yeah. I think you make a great point though that more isn't better when it comes to that a hat tree that has has a dozen different hats that are are good cats that aren't going to be falling apart right. a few right. other things and that's people are happy i mean we did one where the bride and groom brought their own props and they brought in like like five or six things that were kind sure. of in that 20s 20s theme and people just had fun with that they put the hat on and they put the gals put the little whatever and they just had a great time with sure. minimal so well and the, the other thing is you know there's so many you can do custom props now where you can include like uh their pet um i saw you know a couple people now recently do the bride and groom 
you know, sent a picture of their dog and they had a, a, a sign of the dog, you know, that they, they were holding up in the, in the pictures and, and the people love that. Sure. Or you can get big faces of the bride and groom, you know, have them, you know, in there. And things like in that. in so, every shot. Yeah. yeah that would be yeah. cool. Good idea. Uh, let's see. What are we up to? Number five. Number five. So this is, this is a big one. And this touches on something I've already said. I don't need a backup. All my equipment is just fine. <laughs> and this this is so true in and every profession. Yeah. You know, whether you're a photographer or a DJ, you know, you always need a backup. At least to your key components. You know, uh, if you have a DSLR camera, get a webcam as a backup, you know. Something. Carry a small laptop, a netbook, you know. Um <laughs> Just looping that back in. Yeah, you I, 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 I still have it sitting on the shelf over here. <laughs> um, oh. And uh, you know, just just keep a backup, and it doesn't have to be under the table. It could be you know, keep it in the car. Right. Um, just enough that if you have an issue, you can switch over, and you know, you got something to kind of get through the rest of the evening. You know, it saves you from having to refund. You know, and get some bad reviews out there. Um, online, which is, you know, the key you yeah. want to, you want to make sure your customer's happy. Yeah, for sure. And, and most, most people will be, if you, you know, Hey, all of a sudden my, my printer died, you know what, let me just go grab another printer and I'll be right back to you right. know, to the car back in. Most people are going to be like, Hey, wow, you were prepared. And they would, they're going, there's a level of confidence or, or what have you with, with you compared right. to <laughs> the printer died. Well, Hmm. Everybody write your name and address on this card and then I'll send you. No, no. I actually, and prime example, uh, just a couple weeks ago, I was doing an event, outdoor event. I didn't bring my backup. Well, actually, I did have a backup. I, my main printer went down. My backup printer I switched to, which I hadn't checked in a while, um, didn't work. And, you know, luckily I made a phone call to a friend and he came and, you know, bailed me out. But all I did was just the, the prints just kept queuing up. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I plugged the printer in, you know, I just told people, listen, you know, I'll have your, your prints in another 15 minutes. If you can just stop back and, and I'll, uh, I'll have your pictures for you. And, you know, 20 minutes came, they came back and their pictures are sitting there. And, nice. You know, I don't look like such a jerk because, you know, I made a promise that, Hey, you know, your, your pictures are going to be coming. Uh, and they understood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they came back, got their pictures. They were happy. Even a few of them, I printed out a little bit bigger, like a four by six instead of a strip, Sure. you know, their pictures and, uh, you know, just kind of, uh, so it's good to have backup and it's good to have backup to your backup. Yeah. Even the, so you can add. Yeah. The, the backup plan there saved, saved your day. That's for yeah. sure. Um, okay. Let's go. We have number six. Okay, where is the work? You know, everybody thinks that you know it's it's just it, it's right there. You know, um, there's so many places out there that people don't even think of that you can get uh, get. Uh, hold on a second, I have to move a little visitor. <laughs> <laughs> you you had a you had a cheer, cheering section. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. You know, I, one of the things I spoke about at a recent uh, uh, conference uh, expo mm -hmm. was, you know, where where to to get the not the normal stuff. I mean, everybody knows, okay, weddings, parties, school dances, things like that. Um, but you know, if you have a mirror booth or uh, you know even an iPad booth, there's places that you could go and during the week have your set your booth up um that you know you work with bridal shops you know mm -hmm. so take your mirror and you know put the bridal bridal shop logo on there and let them uh let them uh the brides take pictures of their dress and take it home with them so they oh, can wow. see what yeah, they look like great idea you know just just little things like that you just it's working smarter um you know because there the work's out there mm -hmm. but you got to put in you got to put in where to go and it's not always immediate you know and it's it builds a little bit i 
I drop off my booth once in a while to uh, a local uh, party planner and she has it in her showroom. Nice. You know, so people can see, you know, what it is and, and she, she has it there and the kids can take pictures while she's talking to mom and dad or, you know, things like that. So, I mean, make, make connections, just get out there and have household connections. Yeah. And, and the work will come. For sure. Yeah. That's, that's a yeah. good idea. But yeah, that, that the work is, if you're just wanting to do one type of event, you're going to probably be very disappointed or, or very slow. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. But okay. there are, there are people that, that, you know, just want to do weddings and, and parties. And, you know, there are some that want to do just corporate events and things like that. So it's just a matter of what you want to, what you want to go for. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you're willing to put in the time, the effort and the networking to find those events, they're there and it, it can happen. Yeah. It's just some people would rather, we're getting back to the earlier discussion where they, Hey, I got my look at my shingles up, and I'm in right. business, and it should come flowing. So, uh, I think we're up to seven. What do we got next? All right, number seven. iPads are just as good as DSLR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is kind of like the uh, taste great, less filling debate that'll go on, you know, till the end of time. Uh, you know, there, there are you have people on both sides, and and truthfully, when it all comes down to it. You know, an iPad camera. I don't. I don't care how much lighting you have. It's just not the same as a DSLR. Not a chance. You know, and if you're just sticking with one type of technology, you're really selling yourself short. And you should be. You should be. You know, have a mixture of both in your arsenal. Um, limiting, like I said, limiting to to one or the other. I mean, because the the I find that the the you know, the iPad and the, and the webcam and things like that are good if you're doing like social because mm -hmm. um, they're designed for that purpose. You know, whereas the DSLR, you know, you're looking at, you know, something that's made for photography. Yeah. You yeah. know, for a little bit higher end type situation. More of a keepsake um, you're going to get from that exactly. to the other for sure. Exactly. But I think though, one of, one of the cool, I heard somebody talking about this and they were, they were, saying that a an iPad in the hands of a quality photographer can be better than a DSLR in the hands of a a novice in many cases because sure. they know how to use the tools and, and can do that. But equal, there's a night and day difference when between the end resultants of your pictures if you're using, you know, comparing them side by side. Well and that goes back to having the right tools for the job. Yeah, for sure. You know. Um, if you have a DSLR camera, you should have a light meter, you know, and understand how to, you know, uh, focus and set your weight balance. You know, if, if there's so many times where I see questions in, in the photo booth network where people go, oh, well, you know, my, my pictures look beautiful on the screen, but they print out so much different. And a lot of times it's, it's your weight balance. You, you don't have it balanced correctly. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of times your customers got not going to notice. Yeah, they're not going to, but, but, but you notice it. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes that's that's the end result. Yeah. Okay, we are up to number eight. Number eight. Um, I'm a DJ or a photographer, and I can do this. Um, kind of links back to earlier that anybody can do this, mm -hmm. but it's not, it really, the photo booth side is different. You have to really understand, um, where, where things are, uh, and it's in the correct, uh, the correct technology and the training. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is, it's not photography and it's not DJ and, you know, there's the misnomer that, well, you know, I can just add this on to my package and, you know, I'll just hire somebody. And that's not the case. What you got to realize is, you know, this is a person's wedding. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, not as much nowadays, but I mean, before it used to be, you got married once, that was it. You know, <laughs> now, 
you know, second or third. This is just a starter. Package, yeah, this is my practice marriage and everything. Practice marriage, right. Yeah. You know, uh, I've got to write another 10 or 15 years. Um, <laughs> and I said, I could have been married for a long time. So, um, but, you know, the battle will go on DJs and photographers and, and photo booth people. There are people that just do this, just, they are photo booth owners. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not a photographer. They're not a DJ. You know, they're not a caterer. They're not an event company. This is what they do. Sure. Yeah. And so it's just, it's just a matter of, you need to learn. You need to learn and just break it down. So that's, that's what I had for that one. Yep. Nice. So we're up to nine. Number nine. Corporate is easy to get into corporate work. <laughs> and you know, there's, I, I see this all the time is, uh, you know, Oh, I got a, I got a call from this agency. And, you know, they want, they want to do, you know, three cities or six cities, you know, how do I, how do I quote something like that? If that's, if you, if you have to ask that question, you need to, you need to refer them to someone else and, you know, maybe take a, a, a booking fee or something like Somewhere, that. Yeah. Um, Cause there are a lot of big agencies out there. And you can, you can really do yourself a lot of damage if you don't, if you're not prepared for it. Um, being someone who's done some corporate and has worked for other companies, you know, doing corporate, doing corporate stuff, it's not easy at all. And there are, there are just as many complaints as, you know, for ready regular party events that, you know, corporate events are, are 10 times worse, you know, because you're not dealing with the direct company. You're dealing with a marketing company and they're taking your information and they're, they're marking it up and they're sending it to, you know, the, the end result customer, you know, the, the Anheuser-Busch or the, you know, yeah. the uh, X game type thing. And, you know, you, you have to be on your game and you have to be able to talk the talk. And if you aren't sure, you know, learn, you know, learn and do some really just kind of uh, trying to think of the right word to say for that. I, I think there's, there's some networking with someone who has more experience and yeah. has some connections into that, that arena. Yeah. So I've, I've got some friends who have have run some huge photo booth companies and they're doing millions of dollars a year but it's, it wasn't something that happened overnight it wasn't something that it took time and once they got into that it isn't that they can just take the same photo booth in the same background that they used at you know Bob and Susie's wedding the the amount that as you were sa you're saying that you've got to up your game and you have to do things at such a level and it's such a, a, a quality level mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and you've got to be consistent, you know, multiple times in multiple places, sometimes the same day. Yeah. And you have to price yourself accordingly. You know, a lot of times people are doing corporate events and they're thinking, well, I can just charge what I do for a regular event, you know, and they don't realize that you know, you're, you're, you're having to order, you know, multiple backdrops, you know, multiple systems, Yeah. making sure that you have staff in each of those cities making sure that you, you know, there's so many variables that people just don't think about that, you know, they think, well, I can do that for this price. Well, whatever you're thinking, you should be doubling that or if not more, yeah, for you sure. know, because it's not the same as a regular, you know, you know, a 5k walk or, you know, mm -hmm. something that is a little bit bigger than where you'd have a lot more people than you would just a typical event. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's not, it's not your backyard, you know, the, 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 you know, the night out type, type event. Right. Some of those are, are, you know, that it's got to be ready to go and it's got to be at a high level from the beginning to end. And it has to reflect on that company at the highest level. Yeah. You know, for sure. That's a tough, it can be a tough area. So, yeah. uh, we're getting close here to the end. So we're up to number 10. What do we have? Last one. All pricing is the, you know, it's, it's pretty even. And that's not the case. You know, it, you have to price. I, I see a lot of a lot of DJs and a lot of photo booth owners and a lot of photographers. That, you know, they they put the pricing on their website and this and that. You know, no event is the same. It's not a cookie cutter type of industry. You know, you can't just 
say, okay, well, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We're gonna... Every customer is different. So you need to price accordingly. You know, you need to have, you know, a base package and then your add-ons and things like that. And just knowing that your, your pricing is a key point, but not just, you know, giving someone a price, you have to explain to them why you charge twice or three times more than, you know, the guy that's next to you mm -hmm. that they're getting that same quote for that's going to do it for, you know, $200 less than you. Well, why, why, why are you, why are you costing more than that? Well, because, and given the reasons why you should have a script ready to go and, you know, ask yourself questions. If I was going at, you know, what, why am I pricing myself like this? Mm -hmm. What makes me better than X, Y, and Z company? And if you can sit down and, and, and really put a script together that when you get that question and just be able to flow with it and explain that a lot of times you're they're, they're going to choose you over that other company. Not always because, you know, they listen, some places they have budgets too. Mm -hmm. Oh, certainly, you know, but sometimes you, you know, and follow up with them if you didn't get it. Hey, you know, what was it about our, our, was it our pricing? Was it, you know, this or that, you know, a lot of people say, Oh, well, I, I didn't get the job. You know, I'm just, you know, was, I'm yeah. so frustrated. You know, they went with someone who's $200 less. Well, why did they go? With it? Was it, was it your price? You know, were they giving away, you know, were they adding more options? What, you know, what was, it? you know, and be able to answer and speak to that later on for the next time you get that call, that call. Yeah, I like that idea with with having that kind of that script, you know, that some of these common questions, because we get those from every person pretty much who calls. And we're not the cheapest in, in the things that we do. There's always someone cheaper. But to be able to explain that from what am, you know, Dave, why should I spend more money? What am I going to get out of spending more money with you? And now you're, you can, that open, it will open it so you can explain those benefits that, hey, I can, this is why this is what I can do that will be this, do this for you. And we can do this that will do this for you. And yeah. that's turning it around like that and having that script ready to go. So those times when you're, <laughs> where we all get that phone call where they catch us at an odd moment and we're brain dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, it gets you started in that yeah. process. That's that scripting is so such a great idea. Right. And don't, don't be afraid to say, listen, you know, I'm, I'm not at the right moment. You know, this isn't a very good time. Can I call you back in 10 minutes? You know, get yourself together. If you're not ready to really sit down and have that conversation with that customer at that time, just say, listen, you, you know, can I, can I set something up with you in a few minutes? You know, I'm, I'm in the middle of organizing something else, you know, make an excuse up if you have to, but get yourself ready before you make that call back. He, yeah, right. get, and and if you're waiting for those calls, make sure that you're ready that when you pick that phone up and you answer that call, you can have a conversation and you need multiple scripts also. So, you know, the, the script that you're going to have for that, that wedding coming in or that birthday party or um, that corporate event, all those kind of come together and you need to be able to, you know, it's, it, you're not going to have that same conversation for each other. No, not, certainly not. You must be prepared. So that's it. Hey, good. Some good thoughts there. Things, uh, that, some of the misconceptions that are out there within the industry and some, some little tips and such on how to become better at, as a business when it comes to the photo booth industry. That's it. It's, yeah. It's all a matter of learning and growing. Really is, and and it doesn't matter if we're in in photo booth, if we're in DJ photography coordination of events, that learning and growing. I mean, that's one of the reasons why Wedding MBA coming up here in just a few weeks is one of the biggest one of the biggest events in the wedding industry. Sure, because so many people have learned over the years that learning and growing will take them to a new level. That that's where where you see them. Wait, well, you, you bottom line is you have to invest in yourself. If you don't, you're not going to grow and you might as well just close up and, and, you know, get a regular job somewhere. Yeah. I mean, there, a lot of people do this is because they love what they do. Yeah, for and, sure. You know, the ones that are really successful are the ones that, you know, can 
continue to invest in themselves. And we will see them in February at Photo Booth Expo, which is coming up here February 24th through the 27th at the South Point Casino. And you'll be able to come in and go to the, the Photo Booth track, and you're going to be able to catch Dave on stage at Photo Booth Expo. That's me. It'll be awesome. Looking I'm forward, to it. forward to it. Dave, uh, if people want to reach out and uh, and ask a question or, or uh, something to that effect, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? So, I, and I, I post this all the time. Um, my email address is dave at ismilepod.com. And my, my cell phone number, and I tell people, listen, I do sleep, you know, a few hours a night. So, you know, <laughs> middle of the night calls may not get answered till the next morning. Um, it's, uh, 484 I'm not afraid to answer questions. Um, I want to help people. If you want to learn and you want to grow your business, I want to help you, you know, get to where you want to go. Um, it's, it was, I had people kind enough to pay it forward for me and share some, some of their knowledge and really help me get to where I am today. And that's, that's kind of how the photo Wood network started is you know it's a pay it forward type thing it's not always about you know making or getting getting money for something it's about you know seeing someone else do better too certainly and you guys can go out to facebook uh, search photo booth network and uh, request to join the group if you're not part of that group and dave and the crew will be there to to uh, get you in and you can learn a lot there you can go through and People are very, very active there, and you can spend a lot of time going through the, the chat we, questions. We, we have over 14,000 members from all over the world, yeah. um, and people post all the time. And, you know, some's good, some bad. You know, we, we're trying to work on uh, revamping some things coming in the future here. So, you know, I, I, it's going to be more of a getting back to the basics, I think. Nice. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a place where we want to help help everybody. Yeah, it seems like uh, from what I've seen, it's a great, great resource for those in the photo booth industry. Dave, once again, thank you for being on tonight, and we am looking forward to seeing you in February. Looking forward to it, too. Thank you so much for asking me to be here. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you guys for watching. We will catch you next time. Good night, everybody.